just spoke with the team mechanic for I need some some new uh, new uh, parts for my bike and uh, just something like that. Cool. Thanks for sitting down and talking. I appreciate this. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Uh, do you go by Carl Patrick or just Carl? How do you prefer? Because uh, we have a saying in Estonian that um, that a good ki- a kid has uh, multiple names. <laughs> That's amazing. It's uh, well, it's actually been shown that like people think you're more professional if you have two names. So when I saw you and I l- looked you up in like my profile for LinkedIn and business stuff, I put Brendan John Hausler. So people will yeah. message me. They're like, "Hey, Brendan John." I'm like, "Oh, you can just call me Brendan." That's <laughs> funny. I like that. Um, so did you, were you in Estonia for, through high school and university or when, and where are you now? Uh, we were, uh, well, I had, um, because I got, uh, I come from an island. Mm-hmm. So I did the uh, first nine, nine, uh, classes I did there. Mm-hmm. And then I went to South of Estonia. We have, um, like a sports oriented school. Where you do the the last three years before the before the university, you have to do the other two, uh, the after nine years you have to do the other three years to to progress further to to go to university. So I did uh, three years there, and I it was like a normal school, but we also got the like the degree uh, to be a trainer. Okay. So I have uh, the first category to be a trainer, but uh, I don't train anybody because it's the, uh, it's, uh, I'm not that confident. So, um, so yeah. Uh, and then uh, already my last, last year in school, I, when I was 19, I got, I got the, I got the place in the, in the team I'm actually right now. So just came here first, we had uh, some, I think February, March, I was here. Then uh, April, I was with the national team as we had the Nations Cups and uh, all these races. Mm-hmm. And then I went back uh, to Estonia to finish the school. And after on the second part, I, was, I came already uh, full time here and uh, I'm still in France. So, so that's it. Awesome, man. That's fantastic. And so... People are going to look you up. People um, will probably look up where Estonia is. Embarrassingly, some of us don't have the best geography. One thing that I know people will look look up when they look up your name, stagiaire. So there's you, people can Google it and other people call it a trainee. Can you explain that role and kind of wh- what that and what was that like being on a team where you're a stagiaire? Uh, well, I've been in two, two teams. I've been a uh, uh, trainee. Stagiaire mm-hmm. is more uh, uh, more French word, so it's uh, trainee is the is the English word English word. Okay. So I was 2017. I was in Astana. So this was really really a cool experience. But uh, I did some races with them. I think I did tour of Norway and then the whole block in on, in Italy in the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So the Tour of Norway, I really enjoyed. I would say the Italian races were a bit too hard mm. by, by the profile, but still uh, got some really, really nice experiences. And uh, also I was with them. I was in Mil- uh, Milan Turin. I was, uh, I was in, the, in the breakaway whole day. So it was a nice experience, but... When I asked, well, what's what the future will bring for me? Uh, they said, uh, yeah, we we won't sign you. Of course, it was. I felt like let down, or it was it wasn't the best best news. But when I grow older, I I understood that even now, I feel that I have the level. But I'm not sure about uh, I'm not sure about it. So when I was 20 years old, uh, now I understand that even if they would have taken me, uh, I would not uh, have been ready for it. So they were I think they were smart enough, uh, smart enough uh, to do that. And uh, and yeah, it was a nice experience. And uh, the second year I was um, I was in Fortuneo Samsic 
what's now Arkea, I think. Okay. And uh, it was also few few good experiences, but uh, but not uh, not the same uh, with uh, Astana. But uh, I would just leave it by that. When you say so, when you were saying that the race was just too hard, obviously guys are faster. If I go to a race with pros, the race is too hard. For someone like you who's trying to progress up to that level, what do you what do you take away from that? And like, if you have a coach and you talk to your coach, like, what do you think you need to develop to be able to get to that level and race there and be competitive? Uh, I've already well, we work ev- pretty much every training. We we work uh, towards that. Because when you get that level, it's not the problem is that, yeah, maybe you can do uh, the guys who, who, who win those races in, in the highest level. It's not the problem that uh, because I have really, I would say I have pretty, pretty high sprint peak watts and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But the question is more that, for example, also 10 minutes I can do... Uh, if we speak about watts, uh, three, uh, let's say 410, 415, maybe more. Mm-hmm. But the question is the repetitions. Mm. So you can go and slam, but the, uh, the advantage of the, these pros are they can do multiple times. So I think that's the, that's the question. And also when you can do it. I can go out of home. I do 20 minutes. I ride 20 minutes and go do go and make a, an effort of 15 minutes, 10, 5, whatever. Mm-hmm. But also I try to adapt more. For example, sometimes I do some rides that uh, I go out. I do one hour. I, uh, I'll go out somewhere one hour. I do some efforts. But the, the most important efforts I leave after four hours okay so just uh, that with the situation like in in the professionals where the race starts for them it starts after four hours Mm -hmm. so try to adapt more for that and uh and something something like that so so set so in order to do more of those efforts repeatedly you find benefit from doing them like later in a ride once you have like two three thousand kilojoules in the legs and then try and put out those watts yeah something like that yeah okay it depends what? also so some some trainings i do just to get in the quality i go out 30 minutes out then i do a good block of uh, good block of efforts it depends also on the weather and uh, just a good block of efforts uh, and just easy ride back home so 30 minutes out 30 minutes home, you have the block of efforts, one hour, one hour 30. So just the two hour, two and hour and 30 of a ride. That's not long, mm-hmm. but you put in just the quality. Cool. Okay. So maybe this answers. this is actually usually my first question, but maybe you kind of just answer that. What do you think? And it's a very open-ended question. What do you think is the most important aspect of your training? So obviously that's kind of like maybe the missing piece for getting to the next level but when you just think of like cycling training what really pops into your brain uh normally we also have a saying that you don't answer with a uh, you don't ask answer a question with a question but the i also have the questions uh, i took a look and i put put them on the side uh so you you put a question what was the most important aspect of your training and my question is, what this training, uh, if I do that training, what does it give to me? Mm. Like, for example, like really, like if, uh, if I have a four hour ride, just endurance, what does it, what's the benefit of, of this training? I, I also, pretty much every training I have, uh, my, my coach, sends me the, for example, a two day block. Mm -hmm. And I ask, what's that training meant meant to be? For example, four hour, first day is four hour and just ride by feelings, but not too hard. So just endurance. So my question is, and the the answer would be something like, just to stretch the engine, you know, 
mm. Some, something like that. So uh, that's, I think, one of the most important aspects of, of my training, just to, to train smart. For for my for of course for for my knowledge you know because uh, always you can do always better but you just uh, sometimes you just don't know how how to or yeah when you uh we actually just had a big discussion about like endurance riding and you know if you classically look at zones it's fifty five to seventy five percent FTP there's obviously not like a dead set line if you're just going out to cruise. Do you happen to know like where on the scale within zone two do you fall? Because amateurs are like they see seventy five and it's got to be seventy five. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, for actually for me, uh, training is um, if I say endurance, I normally put on my Garmin. I put the map, mm -hmm. just the map, mm -hmm. or I put uh, the battery save mode. So you have like a dead Garmin. So I just ride. I'm. Uh, I I like to. I don't like to get that into the into. For example, into the watts. I like. Uh, I like seeing them. I like to see the ratios of watts and heart rate. Mm -hmm. I can already for if you use that long of time, uh, power meter and and heart rate. You you start to find when you're good. What what should be the rate the ratios be and everything like that. But in general. I do only the efforts by watts. So okay. I do I do the works, but everything else I try to do by feeling. Got it. For example, if, if there's a recovery zone or I have to recover, then it's like a small chain ring. I don't check any watts, just as easy as possible to be by feelings to be ready for the for the next uh, next exercises or 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 effort so so yeah okay what's um when you're talking about the power and the heart rate is right what's what are you looking for in that relationship um and are you using that for like aerobic decoupling or are you using that just to see how fast your heart rate's recovering for efforts or you only look monitoring that on endurance rides uh i just it's also in connection with the feelings okay for example when I'm really strong, or for example, let's say I feel really good, I go out. When I was younger, there was like, if I can keep, for example, 10 minutes, 300 watts, it was like uh, 150, 155 heart rate. Mm -hmm. Of course, it changes by the by uh, by the time you ride your bike and if it's in, in the end of the ride. But sometimes, for example, now I go out, I do 300 watts. Let's say between 270, 300 watts, and it, my heart rate is around 125, 130. Mm -hmm. So, but it's also. You cannot explain it to if if now some listeners are are starting to look that it's very personal. Mm -hmm. It's really really personal. The and it depends from a lot of how how much you have taken co uh, caffeine, how mm -hmm. how hot is the weather. So you have to. There are so many so things. many factors. But in general, it's also if you see this and you also feel strong, it's it's just a click. You know, I, I don't specially look for any ratios. Just it's the click. You know, it's uh, it's, it's good. You know, you're, you're feeling good. Well, it's smart, man. I mean, you get. I think people can already gather from listening to you talk in ten minutes. You're super in tune with your body, but you're also not obsessing over one metric. And like, I'm amazed at how much, uh, not credit, but people, I had an athlete that I just had to tell him like, Hey, can you stop looking at your heart rate? Cause he was like, Hey, I was going kind of hard. And my heart rate was getting really high. I decided to back off. And I'm like, dude, it just like you said, it could have been caffeine. It could, it's getting hot out here in the U S like there's so many factors. Don't, don't stop just because your heart rate's getting high. Yeah. Like it's yeah. That, but that's also the, um, the thing, if you have a power meter on the side, mm -hmm. because some, sometimes it, it also depends, you know, it, it has to be in balance. Yeah. But, you cannot, for example, it's only in the training. For example, in a, in a race, I never look heart rate. 
Yeah. I also I put also the watts uh, in minimum. I try to race on instincts, but uh, but but yeah, it's uh, for me. It's also every. It's good to chat about these things, but for me, to, uh, with train training and everything, it's it should be only you, and you should compare yourself only to you, and and you should uh, should check uh, only only it's. Don't look at everybody else's Strava. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What? So speaking of you, what does your training mostly consist of? Um, I realize it's hard. You know, there's different parts of the season and whatnot. But what do you? What do you really like doing? What makes you tick? Uh, for example, during the season, I don't like gym at all. Mm. But why? Because is that? It, it's nice weather. I don't like to go to the basement. Uh, I can do the all the efforts in, but in winter, I really enjoy, for example, in, in the end of the season, for example, September, maybe in October, you have some, some races, but then you have the rest part. And then you, before the rest, you, oh, I would like to hit some reps in the gym or, or do something like that. But, um, uh, also my training consists, consists of, I would say, A lot of um, a lot of hard hard intervals because I I've seen I've learned about my body that I'm not this type that I can go easy in the training rides and just um, how to say and just gather the form with From the racing. racing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I have to. Of course, the racing will give the extra kick. But I, I I have to hurt myself a lot in the trainings. What 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 are some hard set? What do you consider hard? Are you talking like FTP stuff, VO two max stuff? Are you uh, like anaerobic? For, for example, yeah. I will put you. There is also there was also a question. Um, it was like a favorite interval. Yeah, that, it will be something in in that part. It was. I haven't actually done it. Um, quite long time I, I did this spring but uh, I feel good so it's it's not so important but if I really need to put in the work or or for example I do some racing and I have for example let's say 10 days and I, I and I see I'm I haven't won yet mm -hmm. so I have to get into better shape it's like I do for example I go out and it's it depends, but for example, if I'm at home, so it's flat, it's even harder for, but I do three times eight minutes. Let's say about, let's say about what, seven or eight minute recovery between them. Mm -hmm. But the eight minute is two minutes at, let's say 435 watts. And the other six minute is around 400 watts. So four hundred two minutes at four hundred forty, so it's really really above my my FTP. So it's uh, it hurts a lot. Yeah, so, I think it's gonna hurt anybody. That's a big number. Yeah, so this is a really hard for me. But I know if I can do two or three times this, it will be a. Uh, for example, I like to put this. Normally, I do two day blocks, sometimes three day blocks. Mm -hmm. But this work has to be on the first day. Okay. So this will be on the first day, and the second day can be some other, other uh, also some other other intervals, but they are not that hard. So if people want to try this, is like your threshold around four hundred, or is the four hundred above threshold also? So the threshold, it's uh, like the um, uh, FTP, yeah. Yeah. So okay. So you're going. Oh, like so so I would no no no. It's uh, it's it's much more above. Okay. It's around. Uh, it comes somewhere where uh, somewhere around my records. I think I think the best I've done this eight minute work is four hundred and thirty one watts. So it it varies, you know. But if you can hit hit it around there, the eight minute watts, you do uh, for example first one. Three, uh, let, let's say first one is the best, you do 431. 
So second one, 425. And even if the other one drops around 415, mm -hmm. so it's uh, already quite big difference with the first one, but, uh, but it's still uh, 450 watts for, uh, for eight minutes. And, uh, and also you can check the whole block because you do three times uh, eight minutes. That's already 24 minutes. Mm -hmm. So and put also in the recovery time of 21 minutes, mm -hmm. you have uh, 45 minutes, and it it comes a quite heavy load. Even even with when you ride the really really easy the seven minutes. Okay, so that first two minutes is probably going to be like someone should be aiming for a VO2 max effort, like a 115 percent. If we want to just give somebody a rough guideline, because there's going to be people that hear this and they're going to want to go try and do it. Yeah, um, yeah, but. Um, it depends. It really depends because, for example, for me, I also check this because the first two minutes you check, oh, 440 watts. But actually what hurts is the six minutes. Yeah. Because you're, I feel normally really good uh, when I'm doing the first two minutes, but the hardest part is actually the six minutes. So I, I'm getting coached by Tom Bell. He's a mountain biker in the UK and he's big mm -hmm. on the over-unders. And so mm -hmm. we were even doing like, uh, we worked out to uh, three by wow. 21 minutes where it was a minute over and I want to mm -hmm. say 110%. And then the under was at like 85, 90. So on paper, I'm like, oh, the under's not going to be a problem. By the time I got to the third set, the under was the hard part. Like I could get up and crank for a minute, but then when I had to hold anything above zone two, I was like, damn, this is really freaking hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's, I think it's, it's funny how the body is like, it's not always on paper. The easier is not always the easiest. Um, yeah. But it, uh, yeah. With the efforts, it's really, uh, this one is, is pretty much, we say like, I have like a love, love and hate situation with the, with this one <laughs> but i also like i said i really like to do things by feelings because sometimes if i also if i do this these efforts like i cannot do do the what's the that i'm supposed to do because these are different mm -hmm. but what actually gives gives you the progression is that let's say you do it on a climb do the first two minutes normally you can do the do the the first two minutes mm -hmm. and then you start to suffer too much on let's say you have done the first three minutes of of the six minutes mm -hmm. so you cannot hold it but just fight it as just suffer it till the end as hard as you can no matter don't check the watts mm -hmm. because that's your that's the this day this is your maximum so just put put the effort in just suffer but no matter what the watts are and um also, I like to add some efforts, like 12-minute efforts on climbs. Mm -hmm. I have, like, first four minutes on 400 and, let's say, no, 340 watts. Then the second uh, four minutes on uh, 380 watts, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the last four minutes, because... For the head, you know, you can do, for me, this is not, it's, of course, it's hard, but 340 watts, you feel quite, quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. 380 watts, it starts to hurt a little, mm -hmm. sometimes even more. Mm -hmm. but the benefit with this effort is when you do the, the last four minutes is progressive till max effort mm -hmm. till then, but you don't, you don't watch the watts. So the, the advantage of this effort is you do the best your body can, not not what's fixed as what. You know, it gives you the 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 feeling whatever. Because some pe uh, there are a lot of people who do the first two, and then they go. For example, the coach has put the last four minutes because twelve minutes eff twelve minute efforts to do these efforts two or three times with only you do the descent and you go back up. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard. Yeah. So, so when they put, for example, the coach puts you the last four minutes, puts, let's say, 420, mm -hmm. 430 watts. The problem is when they don't do it, they get the emotion of, 
I'm not good. Mm-hmm. So it hurts too much things, but actually the effort is hard. So if you do 380 and the last four minutes you do the, your max effort, but that's only by feeling, mm-hmm. you know, you get, let's say you get the maximum effort, what you were capable of doing that day, even if it, if the second part of the effort was 380, even if you do the last uh, for me, it's also 380. Then nothing happens. You you gave your best. You you got in a really hard block of uh, of work. You know, it's uh, I see it that way at least. I agree 100. percent I think it's amazing when uh, I think it's because there's so many metrics and there's so much focus on it that yeah. in the past five years it's become easier to just like you said see failure on the micro scale in that day and be, oh, I'm going to go home. I'm just, I'm not hitting my number. I'm not good. What happened? And it's like, no, just ride the bike. Like keep going yeah. hard. Like those efforts that you said, some days the Watts just, they're not flowing, but putting that strain on your body is still a good thing. Um, you know, I think there's a fine line where if someone goes out to start VO2 max efforts and they have nothing, then it's like, maybe you're not rested enough. Maybe you didn't sleep well, all those other things. But yeah. I a hundred percent agree with what you're talking about. Um, one of the questions I sent over was a small thing that might have a big impact on your training. Uh, for example, really good example is today. Uh, too strong coffee just before the ride. <laughs> so for example, and also it was, yeah, again, you can, you can count multiple things. For example, the last two days I wasn't able to train because yesterday I had a travel day. So I woke up, uh, for 420 mm-hmm. so a lot of factors and the day before that i also had to travel to the capital of estonia so to take the to take the flight so no lying um i i planned the training for that day and also i had a, a physio's appointment mm. but i said okay I, I i'm able to do a ride this morning let's say three four hours but it was snowing, oh, so it's uh, it's just uh, <laughs> it it, start, uh, it starts to because you know you you don't always even if if I would have looked out went to someone's place uh, find the home trainer do something uh, in the end it's it's so much mental stress you have to do you have to take back the home trainer because I I didn't I didn't really check uh, the whole. There was just not, uh, th- there wasn't an option. So yeah. I just said, okay, no problem. Last week I had like 24 hours of into walls and everything. So took uh, another day off, nothing happens. Look the bigger picture. Yeah, maybe I'm not as good this, this weekend uh, with the races, but that's all right. Life goes on. Mm-hmm. So this morning had a strong coffee went out and as we spoke uh, with the heart rate what what's ratio nothing was there it wasn't there you know it, it's it was just a big mess just did my ride sweated out a bit the extra water i i got with the with the travel you know just yeah think on small did some pre-race efforts i have uh, just small efforts 90 seconds 360 watts nothing special mm-hmm. you know don't stress out just uh, because you can you cannot change much you know it's it is how it is you mm-hmm. know? so you're racing this weekend yeah two two one day races then uh, i have a quite quite heavy block in uh, in this uh, in may so this weekend two one day races next weekend uh, three day stage race then two days between we have five day ronald pizer tour I won also, it's the UCI 2.2. Uh, I won also the last stage when I was with uh, with the FTG Continental team. Mm-hmm. So good race. And then I'll fly back home. And I have also in the end of May, I have Tour of Estonia that I won also in 2017. That is 2.1. So that's exciting, man. You got to be yeah, super pumped amazing. after COVID and all the, the past yeah. year. It's um what have you ever had a time where you so 24 hour 
our week. Is that normal? Is that a big week for you in time-wise? Hey, what's up, everybody? That does it for part one with Carl Patrick Lauk. If you try those eight-minute intervals, be sure to let us know how they go. Come back later this week for part two. And this is one of the uh, interviews I'm going to be listening to again. He dropped a lot of gems in there. So, Carl Patrick, thanks, man. And we'll be back in a few days. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you are listening on Apple iTunes, we would greatly, 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 greatly appreciate a five-star review if you think that we deserved it. And please tell a friend about what we're doing. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.